A ring celebrating a special achievement makes a cherished lifelong keepsake. Whether it's a class ring to commemorate graduation from high school or a championship ring for the players on a winning sports team. As the years go by, this special piece of jewelry keeps the memories close at hand. Championship rings are entirely custom made. They typically feature the team name and logo, along with the year of the big win. They can also have personalized touches such as the player's name or jersey number. Class rings, on the other hand, come in several ready-made designs presented in a catalog. Graduates order their favorite style, then personalize their ring by choosing options, such as symbols, gemstones, and engraved lettering. For each style, a jewelry designer first sketches the ring's base, the overall shape of the ring minus the decorative elements. Then, an industrial designer transforms the sketch into a three-dimensional computer drawing. The ring's decorative components go through the same process. The jewelry designer's color drawing adapted to 3D software that guides a computer-operated milling machine. The machine transforms two blocks of aluminum into a two-part mold for each of the flat, detailed components of the ring, meaning all the parts except for the base. A steady flow of lubricant washes away the shards of metal the machine cuts away. Bit by bit, the mold assumes very intricate detail of the ring design. Once it's finished, they coat the cavity with a powder that prevents the wax they're about to inject from sticking. Then they load the mold into an injection device. It shoots in hot liquid wax at high pressure, filling all the minute nooks and crannies of the intricately detailed cavity. Seconds later, they extract a wax model of, in this case, the elaborate top of a championship ring. To make a wax model of the ring's base, they use a flexible rubber mold because it would be too difficult to extract the three-dimensional shape from a metal mold. They inject the wax at low pressure as a rubber mold can't withstand high pressure injection, nor is it necessary when the base has no intricate details. The next step is to assemble the wax models of two of the ring's components, connecting the parts with joining wax applied using a fine tip soldering iron. It's at this stage that they also size the ring for the customer, either cutting out a section of the shank to downsize or adding to the shank to enlarge. Next, they begin building a wax structure on which to mount the wax models for several rings they'll be casting simultaneously. They solder a small stem to each model. Then connect each stem to a large wax rod. When they're done, they have a tree-like structure holding all the wax models. They solder this structure to a rubber base, then slip a metal flask over it. Next, they mix up some plaster blending it for a good half hour under a vacuum to remove all the air bubbles. Then they inject the plaster into the flask, engulfing the wax models and supporting structure inside. Over the next 12 hours, the plaster hardens into a shell around the wax. Next, 12 hours in a hot oven. This burns out the wax components, leaving behind a cavity in the shell shaped precisely like them. Now it's just a matter of melting down the metal for the final casting. In just minutes, 
the induction furnace has heated the metal, in this case gold, to the required molten state. They carefully pour it into the plaster shell. Gold flows down channels and into cavities left when the wax burnt out. Once the gold cools and solidifies, they submerge the shell in cool water. This instantly dissolves the hot plaster, releasing the cast piece. Everything that was once modeled in wax is now replicated in gold. They cut the ring components off the structure, then remelt the structure to reuse the gold. There's still a remnant of the structure on each ring component, so they grind it off. Next, using a grinding tool so small that it fits through the ring, they smooth the inside surface. Then they stamp in the company name, along with the internationally recognized code identifying the metal, such as 10K for 10 karat gold. To smooth the ring's outer surface, they use a grinding wheel which has splits in its abrasive discs. The split produces a see-through view as the discs spin at high speed. With the entire surface now smooth, the ring is ready for polishing. They apply some polishing compound, then using another split wheel, shine it up. Next, the top of the ring goes to the stone setting department where using a fine rotary tool, a specialist contours each setting to fit the gemstone's pointed base. Then he sets each gemstone, forcing down the four surrounding prongs onto the edge of the stone. Next, he sets tiny diamonds. He presses each one into place, then pushes the surrounding metal inward to hold the stone down. The top of the ring complete, they now solder it to the base. Using an airbrush, they apply a fine mist of black paint, then wipe it off. This leaves behind a black background highlighting the ring's details. Now they apply some polishing compound to a cloth buffing wheel and polish the ring to a high gloss shine. They clean the ring thoroughly in repeated ultrasonic baths. Ultrasound waves traveling through the water dislodge all traces of polishing compound and other residues. A few blasts of pressurized steam and the ring is completely dry. Certain rings also have enamel decoration. Enamel is liquid glass. It goes on like paint, then has to be baked in an oven for 30 minutes. Finally, a computer-guided engraving machine inscribes any name or personal message customers request be written on or inside their rings. The tradition of the class ring dates back to the 1800s. Championship rings, a wearable trophy of sorts, are a more recent custom. Both make a proud and triumphant fashion statement.